We're used to thinking about how markets succeed, but there are also cases where markets fail. And market failure leads to government intervention. Now, in the past, most examples of government intervention, price floors and price ceilings, for example, minimum wages, have been shown to create distortions in the market, to create, in a word, allocative inefficiency. But nevertheless, there are, in fact, exceptional cases, or not so exceptional, depending on your point of view, where markets don't give us what we want. Three in particular. Sometimes non-economic factors make us wish that we didn't have markets and sellers and buyers for certain kinds of goods and services, such as, let's say, drugs, prostitution, oh, body parts. AK-47s. Now, I'm not saying that you have to agree that there should not be free markets. Libertarians would say, go ahead, let's have free markets in drugs, prostitution, human organs, and assault weapons. But in all societies, at all times, certain goods and services are seen as beyond the pale and the object of moral sanction and so free markets in them are not something that we want and so government intervenes in such cases as you'll find out quickly if you try to make a living in any of these industries governments intervene to stop people from buying and selling them sometimes concentrating on stopping people from selling sometimes concentrating on stopping people from buying sometimes both okay that's one area but there are economic strictly economic cases for market causes of market failure also. One of them is the case of public goods. The problem with public goods, as we'll see in a moment, is that it's not a moral sanction problem, it's an economic problem, that you just can't make a profit selling them. A public good is one that no private firm can produce for a profit. Therefore, private firms will not produce them. And if we want them, we have to get them from the government. So the government intervenes to provide goods which private firms will not produce. The third case is, is interesting, the case of externalities. In the case of externalities, it's not all or nothing like public goods. In the case of public goods, private firms will not produce anything. The quantity we get of a public good is zero. If we want to have more than zero, the government has to provide it. In the case of externalities, private markets will produce goods that produce externalities, that cause externalities but we'll get either too little or too much. It's sort of a Goldilocks problem. Let's take these in turn. Well, let's look, no, enough about moral sanction. Let's look at public goods. Public goods are goods or services, quite often services, that share two strange characteristics. One, shared consumption, which means that if I consume it, there's still just as much for you.
Now that's certainly unusual. If I eat a pizza, there's not just as much for you. I ate it. If I'm driving my car around, you're not driving my car around. Cars and pizzas are not shared consumption goods. But how about a radio broadcast? If I'm listening to the radio, you can listen to the same broadcast. My consumption of it does not diminish the amount available for you. Or television. Or street lighting. Or all sorts of things. But that's not all there is to a public good. For a good to be a public good, it also has to be the case that free riders can't be excluded. Now, as you might imagine, a free rider is someone who consumes the good or the service without paying for it. Now, at first glance, these are sound like similar ideas, but they're different. Take the example of cable TV. Case of cable TV. Is it a shared consumption good? Yes. If I'm watching ESPN, you can too. My consumption of the broadcast does not diminish the amount of the broadcast available. It's not as though the system gets weaker. Signal gets weaker the more people are watching it. It's a shared consumption service, that broadcast. But it is not the case cable TV does not meet the second condition of a public good because free riders can be excluded. ESPN only has to provide cable TV service to people who pay for it. So cable TV is not a public good. How about, on the other hand, let's say we took another good. Let's say we looked at national defense. Yes, national defense is a shared consumption good. If I'm protected from attack by a foreign country, so are you. The fact that I'm protected doesn't water down your protection. And it's also the case, yes again, that free riders can't be excluded. If national defense is being provided by, for the, gov by the government for you, it's also being provided for me. If I don't pay my taxes, I'm still protected. The government can't put a big target on my roof and say, Hanson didn't pay his taxes, go ahead and bomb him to bits. We consume it together, and free riders cannot be excluded. National defense, therefore, meets the category of a pure public good. And for private firms, That's why we say the market fails. Private markets will not produce pure public goods. Simple reason that they can't make any profit doing so. Therefore, the government has to produce it because only the government can make people pay. The technical term is they can coerce payment. A firm cannot force someone who wants to enjoy a public good to pay for it. The government can. The government does so through taxes. So you have to pay for national defense, even if you don't believe in it, even if you're a pacifist. You have to pay for national defense. The government can produce it because the government can make people pay for it. Now, how about externalities? What's an externality? An externality is also called a 
third-party effect. Most transactions don't affect third parties. Most transactions involve just the first party, seller, and the second party, the consumer. Normally that's it. But in exceptional cases, I sell something, you buy it, and other people are affected. And they can be affected either of two ways. The effect can be positive. I sell something, you buy it, and third parties, other people's, other people enjoy a benefit. Or it can be a negative externality, a negative third party effect where I sell something, you buy it, and third parties suffer a cost, pay a cost. If they pay a cost, it's a negative externality. If they enjoy a benefit, it's a positive externality. These can be graphed in interesting ways. We'll see that in a sec. But just to give a couple examples, let's notice if I get a flu shot, then the good or service, in this case, health care, health care creates a positive externality. I go get a flu shot. I buy the flu shot, the hospital sells me a flu shot, but you benefit because now you are much likely, much less likely to catch the flu. I am less likely to be contagious. So I bought something, somebody sold it to me, and other people benefited. Another example, classic example, is I paint my house, or I mow my lawn, or I build a fence. If I pretty up my house, I benefit. If I pay somebody to build the fence, the fence builder benefits. But my neighbors also benefit. My neighbors, third parties, not part of the transaction. I paid the fence builder. He got the money. I got the fence. But my neighbors got higher value for their own property because now they live next to a nice looking house instead of a not so nice looking house. How about a negative externality? Well, let's say I run a noisy nightclub in my house, to the great surprise of my wife and children, but still, let's say I do it, that creates a negative externality. That service, the service of nightclub entertainment, creates a negative externality in the form of noise. I provide the entertainment, I'm the seller, my customers enjoy the entertainment, they pay for it, but now my neighbors, who were happy when I built my fence, now they're sad that I'm running a nightclub because they are suffering a cost. Another classic example is, say, oil refining, or how about a paper mill? The production of paper by a paper mill. I'm running the paper mill, I sell paper, I get money for it. My consumers buy the paper from me. I get the money, they get the paper. But third parties are affected because people who live near my paper mill have to deal with the fact, pay the cost of the fact that my paper mill emits noxious odors, raises the temperature of the lake when I dump my wastewater back into it, kill the fish, lower people's property values, that sorts of things. These things can also be graphed. So let's take a look at that.